About 4,500 years ago, this world was wicked and full of woe. Noah was righteous and God was pleased to save Noah and his family. Now God told Noah, build a boat. For over seven months, it's got to float. Water gonna cover the mountain peaks. Don't skip the details, it better not leak. Here's my plan, Noah, listen good. Noah, make that ark out of gopher wood. Paint it with pitch inside and out. Put a window on top, you better write this down. Make it 30 cubits high, 300 long and 50 wide. Build three decks, get on board. The Lord himself will shut the door. Now grass didn't grow under Noah's feet. He started searching for gopher wood trees. He received his plan from the great I am. God knew Noah was a righteous man. Well, trees started falling and sawdust flew. God brought the animals two by two, two by two, and seven of some to get on the ark when the work gets done. Here's my plan, Noah, listen good. Noah, make that ark out of gopher wood. Paint it with pitch inside and out. Put a window on top, you better write this down. Make it 30 cubits high, 300 long and 50 wide. Build three decks, get on board. The Lord himself will shut the door. I said the Lord himself will shut the door. And, uh... Answers in Genesis that they built this life-size ark in uh, Williamstown, Kentucky, and y'all, when we, Debbie and I got there, it was just amazing. We were just there about a month ago, and like they, the the kids and the man said, you know, it's bigger than you think. It is huge, a football and a half long, football field and a half long. Okay, so my. Uh, I had written in my Bible 450 feet, but when I got there and they just talked about the different kinds of cubits that there can be, it was probably more like 500 feet long. Okay, so you know, a, a hundred yards is 300 feet. Uh, just imagine one and a half football fields long. Okay, and then seven stories high. They made three stories in there, but they're tall ceilings. I hope the video, I wanted, that's why I wanted Butch to show that to you, that the video helps you to have a feel for just how big these uh, levels were, three levels. Okay, so I'll, re I'll read the scripture there, and, <clears throat> and I'm gonna skip some of the, the text just for now, because I don't know who the Nephilim are, and so we're just gonna... <laughs> we're, we're just going to, but it grieved God in verse 6, in chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 6. And it's funny, it's a funny translation. It said, and the Lord was sorry that he'd made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And that word just means he was grieved that what man had done with the freedom that God had given mankind. And that, the, that if the Nephilim are who I think they are, that it was fallen angels that came down to women and had babies with these women and these were the mighty men of renown giants and evil evil and so once that permeated the the i'd say the the pool of of uh, humanity the blood had been so polluted with these demonic forces that we've only got noah and his family left um, that were not polluted by the, the Nephilim. And the Lord said in verse 7 that I will blot out man whom I've created from the face of the land, from man to animals to creeping things and the birds, for I'm sorry that I haven't made them. Verse 8, don't you love this, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay. I felt like we should have sang that song, <laughs> Butch, but um, no, I'm, I'll spare you, I'll spare you. <laughs> <clears throat> so we hear, we get the records of the generations of Noah that he was righteous and blameless in his time. We know that doesn't mean he was sinless, but he was uh, righteous before God and Noah walked with God. And he was the father, verse 10, of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And they each had wives. And by the way, Carol did a good job last week. And it, it is perplexing. 
We know their names, but we know the, don't know the wives' names. Okay, I don't know, but God had a reason. So when you go to Kentucky to Noah's Ark, they named the wives. Okay, Noah had his wife, they given her name. By the way, there are some ancient writings that are not in the Bible that give them their names. Okay, um, so they chose names that were more than likely what they were. So I, I'm just going to tease you with that. You'll all want to go for yourself at some point and see this, this amazing site that they built. Um, and I think they said in the video there that they used Amish uh, carpenters. And they did it without nails. You can see they, had, they did it with pegs. You know, that perfect craftsmanship. I mean, these Amish are just amazing. There would, and like he said, it's the largest man-made wooden structure in the world. Hey, um, <clears throat> huh? Treated lumber? Yeah. Probably, yeah. I, I would hope so. <clears throat> so there's some reasons why we want to talk about this because I'll, I'll cover more in just a minute. But God provides for those who are faithful to him. That's one of the main lessons of the story of Noah, that God provides for those who are faithful to him. God will save the faithful as seen in the salvation of those in the ark and those in the church. And we are to strive to remain faithful just as uh, Noah and his family did. So let me start with something here. And I'll, okay, yeah, I'll loosely follow this book. All right, I'll get to where you are, verses 14 through 15. And <clears throat> verse 12, uh, we've already read, verse 13, God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence. Because of them, I'm about to destroy them with the earth. Verse 14, make for yourselves an ark of gopher wood. I believe that's on the screen. Yeah. We don't know what gopher wood is. Okay. But some think it's cedar, some, I think it's oak, but uh, it's just a very tough wood. Okay? Um, and make an ark with rooms and cover it inside and out with pitch. And um, in just a minute, I'll, I'll tell you what I think pitch is. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. I already said that's about 500 feet. It's width 50 cubits, that's about 75 feet wide or 80 feet, and its height 30 cubits, about 50 feet high. And you shall make a window for the ark. And by the way, that verse 16, that's a bad translation about window. Uh, it should be, you will, shall make a roof for the ark. And it will come and finish it to a cubit from the top. So there's a space about 20 inches between the roof and the top of the ark. Okay. So they had a roof. You'll see why in, it in a little while. And, and put a door in the side of the ark. And you shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And then he talks about the flood is to going to come. But I want to take you just for a second to verse 22. Well, actually, I shouldn't skip. Okay. So verse 17, I'm, I'm bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Uh, verse 18, I will establish my covenant with you and you shall enter the ark with you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you'll bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds after their kind, all the animals after their kind. I'll speak about kind in just a minute. And every creeping thing of the ground after its kind, and two of every kind shall come with you to keep them alive. And as for you, take for yourself some of all food which is edible, and gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. Verse 22, Thus Noah did, according to all that God had commanded him. So he did. I wrote in my Bible beside that obedience. Noah was obedient to God's word. And it is important for us to be obedient. I don't want to skip down in chapter 7, verse 2. It's not part of my text, I know. But, but it, the question always comes up. What about the clean animals? I believe the best rendering in verse 2 is that you shall take with you of every clean animal by sevens, a male and his female. And I believe that the Hebrew there says that way, seven pairs of clean animals. 
So we know that pigs were not clean, but cows are. Okay. And so we have deer and, and the clean animals that we would ordinarily eat, uh, seven pairs of the clean animals, male and female. Okay, I believe it's how that, in the Hebrew it says seven, seven, but I think it's seven and seven. <coughs> and he says it over and over again, a male and his female. Okay. And the birds of the sky by sevens, the, the clean birds, he didn't bother with the vultures, but the doves and the, the, good, the good birds, he, he had seven pairs. Um, so the question came up even last week about how did people live so long? When Noah, Noah gets this order from God, he's 600 years old, right? And how did they live so long? And there are people that scoff at this. But they also have a, a nice um, material from the same uh, scientists who are responsible for all this, that at that time, before the flood, there was a thick atmosphere, and I call it a water vapor canopy, over the entire globe that kept the most harmful rays of the sun. You know how when we're out in the sun for just a little while, we get sunburned, okay? A little too long. Uh, you try to wear sunscreen, but you know it's not keeping everything off of you. But with that thick water vapor canopy, people and animals lived hundreds of years, which is unheard of for us, okay? But for Methuselah to live 969 years, he made everybody else look young. <laughs> I believe he literally lived that long, that Noah literally lived as long as the Bible says he lived. I think it was 800 and 900 years for, for Noah. And, and that after the flood, mankind's, uh, was it 950? 950. Thank you. Um, that <clears throat> gradually we see in the Bible recording how long people lived, that people gradually stopped living that long. And now, if somebody lives to be 100, that's a long time, okay? Uh, and we're, we're, if, I, if I live to be that long, somebody take pity on Debbie and kill me, okay? Just, <laughs> just take me home. I want to go be with Jesus, okay? Um, so this water vapor canopy would have allowed all animals and people to live many hundreds of years. And reptiles grow larger for every year they live. Y'all know they can tell how old an alligator is by how long the alligator is. Yeah. Well, just imagine an alligator that lives for 500 years. Uh, I don't want to meet up with that alligator, okay? I don't like them to begin with, okay? I believe that's also how we got the dinosaurs. Any reptile that grows every year, you live, lives for maybe 900 years, okay? It's gonna be huge. That's why we don't have these huge reptiles today, because they don't live that long. I believe our entire atmosphere changed after the flood, when God destroyed the water vapor canopy, and that's how we got all the water that rained on the earth, that raised, uh, truly believe it was just covered the mountaintops over the entire globe, y'all. I don't doubt for one minute that that's exactly what happened. So lots of scoffers would try to talk about some of those. Uh, <clears throat> that think that this couldn't have happened. And it wasn't some teeny tiny little boat that you see people draw pictures of with a giraffe's head sticking up. No, this was a huge ship, okay? And big enough for Noah and his sons to build uh, pens for all the animals. And a we, you get to see when you go to the ark that they had a fantastic water system. They could capture rainwater, filter the water, have it in pots, and and have it for drinking, okay, especially for the animals. So he probably saved his water for himself, you know, the, the cleanest water. Um, but they had an animal refuse system. They had a, a toileting system in the ark and a way to, dis, to get rid of it. So I stopped for a minute. Are there, any, are there any engineers in this room? Okay, several. Okay, good. You guys amaze me. Okay. Your ability to think through every single detail of a building or a well or whatever you're designing, an oil well. Okay, 
you guys have an ability to see every single cotton picking detail that I would never even think about. <laughs> okay, I'm a salesman. Salesmen, we, we leap and then we look. Okay, engineers, they study before they leap out. Okay, and they have every detail ironed out. Y'all, the reason I make that a point, I'm pretty sure Noah was the smartest engineer that ever walked the face of this earth. Because God made him an engineer. When God told him to build an ark, I think Noah spent maybe a hundred years writing the plans up. <laughs> and it didn't take him 120 years to build this. By the way, when you go there, they estimate, they did it in you know less than a year, I think, to, to build the ark there. But that's with lots of people. They think it took Noah no more than 75 years to build this ark. Okay. He... He was intelligent beyond all intelligence, I think, that even the smartest of you engineers have, okay? I think he was the most intelligent engineer, architect ever, okay? Adam and Eve, when they were created, by the way, do y'all know how old Adam was when God made him? He looks like he has the appearance to us. We think, oh, a 20-year-old man, 30, at the most 30. But no, he was one day old with the appearance of age. One day old when God made him with the appearance of, a, say, a 20-year-old. How old was the earth when God finished creating it? Six days, six days, oh, seven when he was finished. But with the appearance of age, it's quite normal. The mountains are going to look like they have age. Okay. The valleys. The Grand Canyon. Okay. By the way, I think the Grand Canyon was made in, in the flood. Okay, uh, and and so to to think about it, that I believe Adam and Eve and Noah and his sons were literate. That they wrote, they wrote down their plans. They had the ability to write. We've been fed so many lies by so-called scientists in our world. Oh, we descended from apes. You know, man was illiterate. Honky, bull honky, okay. Not true, okay. Man was created literate, intelligent, and more intelligent than the animals, okay. And it's not a stretch. On the ark, if you go there, they show that Noah probably had a library of scrolls that he had with him that he saved on the ark, okay. Probably his plans, <laughs> probably his writings about Adam and Eve and all the things that Methuselah passed down. Okay, so they'd have it written down. I don't think it was all just handed down by oral, like we've been told, that it was written down. What was the alphabet? Probably Hebrew, okay, it's probably, but we don't know. We have no idea what the language was. Okay, but these were intelligent people, okay? And by the way, we're told earlier in Genesis that they had mastered music and metalworking. When you go to the ark, they show you metal saws and hammers and anvils that Noah more than likely used metal tools and had very advanced tools to work with. They weren't just, oh, but, 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 what are we gonna do? No, they had tools. They also had music. They were technologically advanced, and I think on the ark, they spent a year on that ark, that they had music every night. They probably danced, don't tell the Baptists, but they probably danced in the ark. <laughs> they had mastered music and metalworking, and they were technologically advanced. Um, so the fact that Noah could design, and, and his three sons, Probably helping him. Probably Shem was smart. No, I mean, he, Noah was going to be the smartest in, in the family. But um, he provides the plans. God tells him how to do it. We don't have that written in Scripture, but um, that Noah heard directly from God how to build this ark. And when you go inside and see it for yourself, I try to do my best to give you a feel for what it was like to be there. That each story was like two of our stories. I guess twice as high as this, okay, each story. And with ramps 
walking up to the next story, uh, next level. So three levels, they were huge with animal cages everywhere and a, and a water and disposal system for every floor, okay? It was just amazing to be there. They, they estimate that it was 1.4 million cubic feet of space in the ark, okay? That's pretty big, y'all, okay? Um, and uh, I said I'd tell you about pitch, that God told Noah to, to cover the outside of the ark with pitch. Probably tar yeah. is a good uh, supposition for us. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if you're you know, engineer John back there was gonna tell me. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it would be in the ark. So that's how early on exploration began with looking for tar seeds uh, and then digging down. All right, tar, even from engineers yeah. in our age, okay? And you, as close as they could get with building a, a wooden ark, you know, for the for the outside, you want it to be totally waterproof. They probably did fill in all the gaps with with tar, and everything was sealed, watertight. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> big, big enough to handle all the animals. Um, so how many animals were there? Some people scoff at this and say, "Well, there's." 60,000 species of animals. No. He says they were all after their kind. Okay. There were two of each kind of animal. Well, anybody who's studied any kind of biology, you know the, the saying, uh, here I am, blank it out. Uh, family, genus, and species, those are the last three. But kingdom, phylum, class, family, order, genus, and species. Okay, I just blanked out for a second. Okay, but if you get down to the family area or the order, do you, you can have, the, the rule for that is any two animals that can mate and produce fertile offspring are closely related enough to be in the same family. Okay, and using that as our definition, there were probably 7,000 total animals on the ark. Just 7,000. And they could repopulate and have the genes to ha make all the variations in the species that we see today. Okay, so the dog kind, the, the bear kind, we can produce the black bear and the brown bear and the uh, other kinds of bears, all kinds of dogs we see today all descended from these kinds of animals, okay? That were plenty enough with the genetic uh, capability to become the species that we see to this day. Um, there were probably fewer than 1,400 animal kinds on the ark. And, as a, the uh, video showed you, these were probably not full-blown, full-grown uh, elephants, and giraffes, no, probably babies. That would be, hey, even bear cubs are easy to get along with when they're babies, when they're cubs, right? I went to Baylor, okay? I got to play with bear cubs, okay? Yeah, it's a little scary at first, but they don't bite. They don't hurt you, okay? And they get along with each other. We've all seen videos of all kinds of animals with like a, a bear cub or a, a dog uh, uh, baby, uh, huh? Lion cubs. Lion cubs, playing with birds. You know, you know, birds sleeping with them. Okay, we've seen videos like that. Animals tend to get along with their when they're young. Okay, that's probably what we had. Not the full blown lion, the full grown, but cubs. Okay, babies. Uh, people have asked why was Enoch taken up and Noah was not and y'all this is easy okay God probably had a different plan for Noah he needed Noah to, to finish out being a righteous man and save the earth and for the earth to be repopulated animals and people with the ones that God chose to save okay 
And uh, so Noah had a job to do. Why do you think we're here on this earth? God has a job for us to do, each and every one of us. We have people we need to minister to. Okay? So we all have, even as righteous as Butch might be, he still has a job to do, and God didn't take him just yet. And I'm glad he hasn't. <laughs> <clears throat> our role is to be faithful as we can be and God will keep his promise to reward us beyond our ability to comprehend so I mentioned that uh, there are several types of cubits the so one that they like at the Ark Encounter is nippet, uh, the Nippur cubit 20.4 inches and each cubit was 1.7 feet um, and uh, so when it's times 300 cubits, it'd be 510 feet long. Uh, that's why I just shortened it to 500 feet, 85 feet wide and 51 feet high or seven stories. Uh, now, there are over 200 myths about the flood over the entire earth. I just wrote down a couple. There's the Epic of Gilgamesh in Mesopotamia. It has almost total agreement with the Bible story of the flood. Okay, that um, it doesn't surprise me that there would be a story in Mesopotamia about the flood. Uh, how about the, there's a story in China, the New Wall flood. It, man, imagine they named him New Wall. Hmm, sounds a little bit like Noah, doesn't it? Okay, all over the earth, even the Choctaw Indians have stories. Um, I didn't list them all. We are all descendants from Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the entire world. Would they not have taken their stories with them wherever they moved? And when we had the Tower of Babel, when God confused our languages, and we ended up with all speaking different languages by family groups, okay? And they moved to get away from those crazy people that speak English. They want to speak Indian and they want to speak Swahili and they want to get away from all those crazy Americans. Uh, not we weren't Americans back then, but you know, those Europeans that spoke English, okay? And the Chinese went to by themselves and they took the stories with them. It makes perfect sense that we have these stories in almost every language. It's not that it's a myth. They took the story with them, okay, and wrote about it. Um, so I believe it is so believable that this all happened just as we hear it in Scripture. So the, uh, the uh, website is www.arkencounter.com if you want to ever write that down. Uh, and I did bring my book with me that I bought there, Inside Noah's Ark and How It Worked. I read and reread that. I still don't understand because I'm not an engineer, John. Okay, so there's so much in here that only an engineer would, would appreciate. Uh, ArkEncounter.com. <clears throat> what are some? I'm gonna. This is a rhetorical question. What are some lessons we can learn from our study in Genesis chapter six? Um, well. God is the one who destroyed the life that he created. He was in full control. Man destroyed his own innocence, but God brought, brought about the ultimate end of that generation. Verse 17, God brought about the end. Okay. God will ultimately act against evil on behalf of his righteous people in verse 17. Um, Y'all, we know that this world is evil that we're living in. Right? There's not much disagreement there. That it's scary. David and I have four grandchildren. We're scared for our granddaughters in particular. Our grandson somewhat. He's going to be part of the problem. But, <laughs> but uh, people are evil in this world. And yet we know, just like Noah was saved by the ark, we are saved through Jesus Christ. And our faith in Jesus Christ we are going to be like Noah and his family in the ark and be saved and raptured out of here and taken away from the, the judgment of the wicked on this earth. Okay? We have a redeemer. Uh, and this is the first time in verse 18 where it says, Behold, I will establish my covenant with you. Y'all know there's a big difference between a covenant and a contract. You okay? 
A covenant is God's one-way promise. This is what I'm going to do. There, there it is up there. Thank you, Butch. He keeps keeping up with me. Um, God establishes the covenant. He is faithful. He guarantees it. God blesses man. God's contract for mercy is our uh, mercy from Jesus, and God fulfills it. But in an agreement, in a contract, both parties negotiate. There's opt-out clauses. Both sign. It equal benefit, guaranteed honesty, but it can be annulled. Okay, we all have experienced contracts that have been annulled or not, the promise is not fulfilled. Okay, God fulfills his promises and he is faithful. That's a big difference for us. <clears throat> God knows our needs and provides for them. Verses 19 where he brings uh, the animal. God brought the animals to Noah. Okay. God didn't have, Noah didn't have to go out and round up these animals. God supernaturally brought the animals to Noah. And all they had to do, they had the preparations made for a hundred years. They had enough time to get everything ready for the animals. All the pens made, all that wonderful engineering done inside for the water and the wastewater system to make it all work, okay, and food sources. When we were there, I never stopped to read Genesis in total detail like this to realize they were on the ark a year. And it finally says that in, in chapter 7, in, in verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 14, in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. That is 364 days from the start of the flood. Wow. Okay, somebody else is going to cover that in detail. I won't overstep my, my uh, charge of what to cover. But they were on the ark a solid year. Okay, that's a lot of food, a lot of provisions, a lot of water. I don't think Noah fasted for a year, <laughs> and certainly not his daughters-in-law. <laughs> okay, yeah, or his sons. Um, Noah did as God commanded and was saved, and it was to Noah's obedience that God considered him righteous. So. How is the ark a type for our church today? I think uh, that's going to be a, there was one ark, there is one church, the Baptist church. No, I'm teasing about that. Okay. <laughs> we Baptists can be really, really single-minded that we are the only church. No, sir. No, we are not. Debbie and I have met wonderful Christians, Methodists that are Christians, no, Catholics that are Christians. I'm just making fun of myself, y'all, okay? That we differ in how we interpret some things, but lots of say people in different denominations besides our Baptist denomination. You know, they used to say about Baptists, they, they wish the Baptists quit having arguments because they divide and multiply. <laughs> the, Baptists, the Baptists are divided and they have twice as many people coming to church because they go, they just go recruit some more, okay? And Baptists are kind of hard to get along with. We divide to multiply, okay? But, Debbie, who's the guy with the Gaither band? Um, I love that story. Mark Lowry, okay. He's the funny one. Yes. We went to one of their concerts and Mark Lowry did this thing. He goes, how many Catholics we got in this room? And it was a huge uh, place. And some hands were clapping. How many Methodists we got here? A few more hands clapping. How many Charismatics? Well, there was a big uproar when he asked for Charismatics, okay. And then, you know, I'm, it, that's what happens. How many Baptists? Well, we erupted a Baptist in, in the house. And the Presbyterians, how many Presbyterians? How many Methodists? And finally, Mark Lowry gets to the end and he goes, somebody's wrong, somebody's wrong. And that started my ecumenical movement. I was born and raised a Baptist and I went, wait a minute. Yeah, these, are, these Presbyterians, they are saved. These Methodists are saved. What's wrong with me? We just have little differences and we separate ourselves into different denominations. But we are one church. God's global church, we are one church. That's what I mean by this. There is one ark and there is one church. When we are saved and baptized as Christians, whether, whether you're sprinkled or whether you're immersed, okay, we are in one church, God's body. By the way, the church is God's plan A. He doesn't have a plan B. <laughs> the church is God's only plan 
for our salvation. Okay, we have to pass it on. There's safety only in the ark. There's safety only as we are part of God's church, his global one church. Okay? As good as First Baptist Houston is, we're not the global church. We're just part of it. Okay? There's only one way into the ark. That was through that door. And there's only one way into church, Jesus Christ. He is our salvation, John 14, 6. Those in the ark are alive through the water, through the floods. Those in the church are alive through the water of baptism, no matter how you're baptized. Okay? We're really baptized by the Holy Spirit. When we, are, when we accept Christ, we're baptized by the Holy Spirit. That we, became, we become children of God. The ark carries uh, them to the next life, a recreated earth. The church carries us to new heavens and new earth. I can't wait for that day. Okay. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Because the next earth is going to be so much better. Okay. Way better than what we have here. Uh, <clears throat> only believers, uh, number six, only believers were in the ark and only believers are in the church. Now, I realize that you're going to take umbrage with me there. There are unbelievers who hide amongst us, but hopefully we convert them. Okay? But only true believers are in the true church. Are you with me on that? And so only believers were in the ark. Number seven, the ark was laughed at and seemed irrelevant before the flood. And the church seems irrelevant before the judgment. How many scoffers are scoffing at us in the church? To, you just believe a bunch of myths. Jesus wasn't real. I hear that so much. Okay. It's absolutely, we know it's not true. We know that Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. He is real. The Holy Spirit's real. God is real. God created this earth in a magnificent way. He did it. I think he was loafing to do it in six, eight, 24 hour days. <laughs> He could have done it in six seconds. Okay. Um, but the ark was laughed at. The church seems is laughed at today. But we're going to be proven right, y'all. The church will be proven right. Number eight, the ark was built by those who believed and obeyed God's promises. And the church is built today by those who believe and obey God's promises. And thankfully for all the faithful church people from time from the time of Christ till now that have carried on the gospel for us that we are uh, believers and then number nine God provided for those who built and lived in it God provided all the provisions and told Noah put some food in that ark okay don't you dare go in there with no food okay engineers always have a plan okay and they think through everything and I believe Noah thought through everything and as God told him to do. And God provides for the establishing of his church and preserves it through the catastrophes of this life. Y'all, we all go through many, many catastrophes in our life. Many tough times. And yet God provides for us. I just saw Buddy Griffin out in the hallway. I didn't think he'd be here, but he's been in really, really bad health. And and uh, he's feeling much better. He, he's so, he was here today. So it's fun to see somebody back in church. That's the first thing he wanted to do. When he felt good enough to get up and walk, come back to church and be here. <clears throat> and number 10, um, the ark was necessary because the flood did come. The church is necessary because the judgment is surely coming with Jesus Christ's return on this earth. There is judgment to come. Different than the flood, right? But judgment, nevertheless, it's going to be even more catastrophic. We're going to burn up here. Okay. All the things we've worked so hard to have here, cars and jewelry, and it's all going to burn. <laughs> Everything's going to burn. Everything we think that we hold precious except the love we have for our family, our husbands, our wives, our children, our grandchildren, all the relatives, all our brothers and sisters here in church, our love for each other is not going to get burned up. That survives the catastrophe that's coming. So our main lesson is that we need to be in the ark 
and we need to stay in the ark. We need to be in the church and stay part of the church until we're taken home. Okay? We need to be in the ark and stay in it. Uh, <clears throat> so, how can we use this lesson to grow spiritually and help others come into a relationship with Jesus Christ? We know that God has always provided salvation for the faithful. Okay? Those who are, are not faithful are always will face ultimate judgment and destruction. As we grow in knowledge of God, as well as in his love and grace, we develop dedication and desire to be what he wants us to be. This story of Noah and the ark shows us the importance of our membership in the church too, as we, through which we effectively serve God. But the type of ark which we will avoid, the next catastrophe, uh, for those who refuse to believe the gospel, we have a different ark. Okay, we're in the, the church. We're in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're held by Jesus. Romans 3, 22 says, We do not earn righteousness, but we are made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have been declared righteous. I know I don't feel righteous. I don't know about you, but I don't ever feel righteous. But you know what the scripture says? We are all have been declared righteous who have placed our faith in Jesus. That is our confidence. That we've been declared righteous. And it was by faith that Noah built what God told him to build. By faith, Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives got on the ark. And by faith, God saved them all. And they had to get on the ark to be saved. We have to come to Jesus Christ and place faith in him to be saved. So at this point, I think it'd be much close enough to, to time to questions, things maybe I left out. Um, and uh, if we encourage you to write questions down. Okay, I see a hand. So, right here. Well, you mentioned, I've got two questions. All right. You mentioned all the clean animals were on board. Yeah. We have lots of pigs and uh, yeah. vultures. And, you know. <laughs> there were more pairs of clean animals. Right. Seven pairs of clean animals and one pair of every unclean animal. I see. Okay. Now, you also mentioned the giants. So David fought the Philistine. Right. He's a giant. How yes. did he come back? <laughs> okay. By the way, Goliath was... Um, about 10 feet tall. They tell it in cubits, but nine and a half. Yeah. Okay. Philip's always going to correct me. Okay. He, he, <laughs> so I've, I've learned to deal with it. Okay. When you have a, a friend like Philip for almost your entire life, you got to get corrected. Okay. It's all right. Um, so let's just go with nine feet nine that Philip said. It's almost 10 feet tall. Okay. <laughs> How tall was one of our NBA players? Here I am forgetting names right this minute, but seven, almost almost eight feet tall, but seven, seven, okay. We've had some big guys on the Rockets, okay, one big tall. Okay, I think there's been a nine foot man uh, in this world. Uh, it was, I've read about him, okay. I don't know if he's still alive, but giantism is still a genetic possibility. But that's about as tall as they get, okay. Uh, the Nephilim were actually giants, maybe bigger than than Goliath. Okay, and that they now have all died off. Okay, the flood would have killed every all that sea, but there were still somehow some giants after the flood. Okay, like David had to slay Goliath, but there were just some sons. What was Goliath? Son of um, huh? Yeah. Gats. Uh, he had lots of big kids. <laughs> I think Goliath, the reason David had seven stones, wouldn't it seven stones here? And had five stones? Because he knew Goliath had four brothers. Okay? You know? <laughs> he wasn't going to miss with the one he had. Okay? But Goliath might have brothers who were mad and they'd come after him. Okay? Say, so, but you had one more question. That was your two questions, okay. Right here, sister. Does something speculate that Noah was a, a large man in a way? 
we always tend to think of a small guy, but genetically he was theoretically a, a very large, we call him a giant. Okay, that could very well be. But not only were they the smartest, we've, we've come down since creation, okay? He might have been the biggest, one of the biggest men. That's a very good point, okay? Um, yeah, I was in an elevator one time with Hakeem Olajuwon, and <laughs> I said, what's the weather like up there? And he starts spitting on me. It's raining up here. <laughs> okay. You don't want to ask an NBA player what's it like, weather like up there. They have fun with you. Yeah, Paul. Well, well, you, you uh, dribbled right up to it. No. <laughs> I did. Psalm 90, of course, comes along later and says, well, the norm is going to be the three scoring and ten. ten. But if a person is given the exceptional help and everything, then it's going to be four score, eighty, you know. Yeah. So we know that in the post uh, flood world that that is going to go back to that normal. But the incredible thing about those other ages is not that. And nobody seems to pick off on it. Either. The fact is they had incredible detailed records about each of these. And that's what shouts out from the page. Exactly. Oh my goodness, this is true because, because we have detailed records. We're not guessing at all this. We have records. So, and it wasn't just oral, like we've been lied to by previous scientists, okay? We didn't come from apes. We we didn't evolve. We devolved from the smartest and maybe the biggest down to he's a little 160 IQ if you're Einstein. Okay, okay, which I'm not. <laughs> so yes, they were probably bigger and smarter. And what a is that it? Okay, question over here, yes sir. When I think about Noah, since Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. <clears throat> He was looking for it. We need to be looking for God's grace in our lives. Noah was looking for God's grace. And we need to be looking for God's grace. Don't Thank you for that. that thing. I like that. Don't be, the, don't be the third monkey trying to get on the ark after the door shut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if the reason God asked them for the seven pairs of clean animals is so they'd have a food source. Well, they did, but remember after the ark finally lands and the earth dries up to where they can get off the ark. Okay, Noah has a sacrifice. And you have to have, you don't want to sacrifice two of your only animals of that particular kind. Okay, so they have seven pairs of clean animals of which they're going to so make a sacrifice and they are going to later eat. It's, by the way, man was not eating animals until then. It was only after the flood that God allows man kind of to eat even though the clean animals. And it also says yeah. that there was that the fear Okay. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. In, in the animals for man and man for animals after the flood. So even those animals on the ark, there was no fear factor. No, they were afraid of no yeah. and Shem Ham and Jacob. Yeah. And even the wives. And I even wondered when God shuts the door. For seven days they were in there. Can you imagine the ridicule that was happening outside the ark? Oh, yes. And then when the rain happened, what if Noah had compassion and wanted to bring some into the ark? He couldn't. He couldn't. God, God, God shut the door. door. Yeah, that's and that's 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 God shut the door. Yeah. And it's just like salvation, like Paul said. And ladies, I'm sorry to tell you this, but there were snakes on board the ark. I know. Creepy, right? So they, they, didn't huh? they, didn't they didn't bite. And they were babies. They were sweet. <laughs> they were sweet. They, and they were, there were roaches. Oh! Why did God let roaches get on the ark? I mean, how many of us would have the faith to do that with never seen rain? Right. And everybody making fun of you. They, for a hundred years they made fun of you. I mean, you know, that's, that's some like, that's mad, bad faith. There. Yeah, it is. It's really strong, incredible faith.
Should we not have that same kind of faith, rock solid faith, no matter what comes our way on? Okay. Noah showed us really strong faith, but we don't need that strong faith. You know what? We gotta be strong because the world wants to make fun of us. Okay? And they're gonna jeer at us until they're burned up. Oh. There's a lot of things in the Bible that just scream at you. They're not our opinion. Early on, males were intended to be God in his plan, to be leaders, to defend society and to be the warriors and everything. And women had certain roles and everything. And just like individual people have different roles. So that screams at you. The other thing that just is loud. You may be a faithful Christian or a faithful Jew at those times. But God calls for leaders, for other people to follow. And it is not against God's will to have strong presidents, strong kings, and everything. This is entirely consistent with God's will. But to those who have great authority is great responsibility, says James, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's that's the plan. In certain churches, I'm not naming any including <coughs> They decided the women would be leaders and everything and lead everything. I was in a Methodist church. We had a female minister, district superintendent, and bishop. All of them. Oh, wow. I'll so what that. happens to the men? I guarantee you, they disappear from leadership roles. And it's not that females were bad, but you, you get the point here. And if your home is like that, your man is not going to be the leader. I promise you. It will fail. It's the house that falls on him on itself. You know? Okay, so I don't swerve into something bad. I'll just let you <laughs> say, I know I need my wife, okay? We need our women, okay? They're smarter than we are, okay? And they just, they're not brain damaged like us men, okay? So, you got it. Uh, yeah, how close was man to God? I understand it. Other stuff they have, uh, like watchers that were watching mankind. The watchers? Uh, how physically close after Adam and Eve, how long did God physically stay with man to where they were just talking back and forth for the angels? Oh, okay. How long did, because we know that Adam talked to God. Is that what you're saying? Okay. And Adam lives. A long time, 930 or something close to that. Um, and I we don't know. Um, because it's possible that God spoke audibly to Noah. You would think he Noah hadn't heard it. Um, and yet we hear after that not much audible from God. So I say sometime after the flood is when Mankind stopped hearing from God audibly, and until Moses gets to speak face to face with God, and then when Mo when God spoke from the mountain top with all the rumbling of the mountain, and the people said, uh, "Moses, you speak to God. We don't want Him speaking to us anymore." <laughs> so we asked God to speak to us. Okay. Well, even the angels had contact with mankind. Yes, that's what they're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. A little too much content. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we don't think that's still going on, Philip. We were pretty sure that the angels aren't still coming down and messing with our women. Okay. Some people actually believe that, though. Do they? Yeah. Some I kind of don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, 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 we'll, we'll cut down in the butt. That's a good thing. Who is that? 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 if it was uh, soundproof in a way because um, the horror of listening to people drowning and, yeah. and the wailing and everything would have been horrifying. <laughs> and so I know they couldn't have shut the door themselves anyway. It was too big. But God showed such great mercy. I have to believe that that was shut out. In a way, maybe miraculously. Uh, That's a good point. They're yeah. saying that they probably didn't even hear the, the, because of the soundproofing of the art. And think about how thick that wood was, mm -hmm. and they were totally enclosed. Okay, with only that one twenty inches at the top for the this was in the top of the art and the roof, 
okay, where they could have some airflow. Okay? So they probably didn't hear the shrieks and, and, and all the people dying. And, and, and the God, they played the play music, though. Okay, I don't think they played the music, but. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying, God, could y'all But the other question, too, is people are always saying, where is the ark? Oh, okay. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, Where is the what ark? What happened to the ark? Okay. There have been theories that people think they located the ark in, through the years. And people have written about it. I studied it. Now, wood, it's over 2,000 years. Oh, actually, it's 4,000 years. Um, wood that's over 4,000 years old isn't going to, to survive in our atmosphere, okay, with rain and bacteria and it's disintegrated. Well, I, really, I firmly believe it's gone. Well, they could have dismantled the ark and used it in the building of their now, new city. That's the other one. Maybe they brought that up because it's pretty, you know, when they first landed, you know, Mount Ararat, okay, and they disembarked, I think they lived on the ark for some time, okay, until they could take part of the ark apart and build them a house uh, and, and make suitable quarters for their wives and their children. They're having children by now. Okay, uh, so they probably did use the ark, uh, a lot of the components of it, uh, for their new houses. They lived on it for a while. All the rest of the room was pretty wet. Mm -hmm. Kind of well, no, the pitch. Yeah, the, the pitch would have the tar would have kept it dry. You know, the, any trees that were out there were pretty wet. Yeah, the trees were wet. Yeah, so they would have used their ark, um, but. We're, we're kind of getting a conjecture, and I need to close this here pretty quickly, um, that the ark doesn't exist, in my opinion, <coughs> and so do several scientists, that it, you're not going to find Noah's ark today. It's fanciful to think about it. People think they've cited it. I've read all about it, seen pictures. If it is, great, but I doubt it. Okay. Thank you all.